Most of our lives, we're running on autopilot in how we greet each other, how we physically interact, and how we expect others to generally act around us. We've learned these behaviors, these cultural protocols from childhood, and thankfully so. It means that we don't have to think about every little word and every little action in life. It saves us a lot of time and energy because we're communicating and interacting with others who follow essentially the same rules, who belong to the same culture. But in cross-cultural situations, it's often the small things, the unexpected behaviors or mismatch of expectations that don't get addressed that can grow into real issues, especially when we're running on autopilot without conscious thought and depending on our cultural programming to carry us through. But when someone interacts with us in a way that we're not accustomed to, that surprises us, or in a way that we interpret to be rude or inappropriate, we can get irritated, annoyed, even angry, and all of which, of course, can lead to further problems. Take, for example, an experience shared in the compendium Nonverbal Communication, Science and Applications. A courtroom judge was attending and thoroughly enjoying a workshop on nonverbal communication. She was an eager student, making connections between what she was learning and her experiences in the courtroom. But when the discussion turned to the meaning of eye gaze and its rules in different cultures, a look of horror came across her face. And she confessed that she may have given defendants from one particular cultural group harshest sentences because she had thought these individuals were disrespecting the court by not looking her in the eye a rather serious consequence for the misinterpretation of a single culture-bound behavior. If we're seeing behaviors in persons we work with or socialize with, behaviors that collectively we perceive to be an ongoing issue, our negative judgment of those individuals may be reinforced and deepened. In his book, A Path Through the Jungle, English psychiatrist and professor Steve Peters shares brilliant advice on handling these negative emotional reactions. He says, don't act on emotion, rather see emotion as a sign to act. When we begin to feel bothered, when we first feel that someone is perhaps not being collaborative, cooperative, or an effective communicator, that's the time to get to the truth rather than drawing an emotional conclusion. What specific behaviors are we seeing in the other person that's making us feel this way? Could we be missing context or unknowingly misinterpreting the meaning of these behaviors due to the fact that we're seeing them through the lens of our own culture? Culture is the backdrop by which we understand language, and it can be easy to misinterpret words or phrases that hold very different meaning or are used differently in our culture compared to the person speaking. What do you mean, for example, when you say or nod yes? Do you mean maybe, I'll consider it, yes for now, definitely, or one of the many gradations in between? Most cultures make extensive use of these subtle shades of yes, each holding specific meaning and context and understood generally to be polite. This can be quite different in the US where the Protestant values of the early European settlers gave added weight to expressions like, let your yes mean yes, and leading to a cultural preference for directness. It's not hard to see how misinterpretation can lead to misunderstanding here if not corrected. So how do you handle disagreement? Conflict isn't usually desirable, for example, in the US, but people are often encouraged to deal directly with conflicts when they do arise. It's a problem solving approach and face to face meetings are typically recommended as a way to work through whatever problems exist. But in many Eastern countries like China, open conflict might feel embarrassing or demeaning. There being a preference for differences to be worked out quietly, a face saving approach. Here, a written exchange might be the preferred way to address the conflict. People from France and Russia often tend to be more confrontational and emotionally expressive when handling disagreement, believing that tackling issues head on is most effective. Three very different strategies, each being the preferred and most respectful approach in different cultures. So again, how do you handle disagreement? How about your co-workers, clients, or friends? 
there are many other interesting culture bound behaviors that are worth exploring such as when is it appropriate to apologize what's the best way to make a group decision or what are the purposes of having meetings and what's expected from attendees at meetings and we'll cover these in future videos emotions can be easily triggered by unexpected or misinterpreted behaviors when we don't have all the information but those emotions can change almost instantly when understanding is gained. Thanks for watching. If you've enjoyed this information, take a look at one of our other videos in this Across Language and Culture series linked in the description. I'll see you next time.